When I first started investing, I thought the best way to get global international exposure was to hold an international ETF, so I bought into one called VIXUS, V-X-U-S. This is a Vanguard international ETF, but I was wrong that this was the best way to do that. There's a much better way to invest globally and get exposure to different economies around the globe, especially emerging markets. So I held Vixus for many years, but I just sold it. Why would I do this? Isn't this the safest and best way to participate in profits from different economies around the world through something like an ETF? Well, no. First off, let's look at this ETF's performance. We'll see here over the past five years, it's only gone up 15.35%. You think that's bad. Let's take it back to all time from 2011 till now, that's 12 years, it's only up 15.98%. This is horrible performance and there is a reason why. If we look at the portfolio composition of Vixus, you'll see here it holds a massive 8,526 stocks. That's crazy, that's a lot. And if we look at the top five, you'll see known companies like Taiwan Semiconductor, Nestle, Samsung, but you'll see Taiwan, their top holding, only makes up 1.52% of the fund. That is crazy to have your top holding at only 1.52%. So if Taiwan Semiconductors jumps 20%, it will barely budge Vixis due to its extremely low allocation. Really, this ETF is over diversified and diluted like crazy. No wonder why it has performed so poorly. This is why I sold Vixis. My money just won't grow this way. So what about if you invest in a foreign company directly instead? Well, I still don't necessarily think that's the best route either. Let's look at Alibaba for an example. Over the past five years, this company is down a massive 56%. That hurts, and I'm sorry if you are invested in Baba and are dealing with these losses. Now, the company is great and has great potential. It has been called the Amazon of China, but there's one big problem. The government and the economy are vastly different from the US's. See, the United States government and economy are set up for businesses to thrive and grow. There are also many protections and regulations to prevent our government from overstepping and basically doing what it wants when it wants to the companies that operate in the US, whereas other countries have governments with much more control over the businesses that operate in their country. And in the case of BABA, we have seen massive fines implemented on this company for no real justifiable reason. We also see other governments just break up a company with little hurdles. These governments can simply because they have that power to do so. In the United States, there are much more checks and balances and our economy structure is set up to favor innovation and growth. So the better way to invest globally and capture emerging markets is to invest in strong solid companies in countries and economies like the United States that promote an environment of growth while having strong protections and processes where the government cannot just take an action against a company because they feel like it or don't like what they are doing. So I choose to invest in US companies that do business globally. Let's look at Microsoft as an example, a company in my portfolio. You'll see here Microsoft over the past five years has gone up 292.98%. That is fantastic growth. Now if we take it out all time, it's up a staggering 415,000%. But let's look at it since 2011. We're taking out that time frame, just like we did with Vixis, that grew 15% over 12 years, while well, Microsoft has grown 1,500 and almost 26% over the last 12 years. A big difference. Now, you might be saying, how is Microsoft going to give you exposure to international markets? Well, Microsoft operates in 190 countries and is made up of more than 220,000 employees worldwide. Just look at all these countries. Many of these I've never even heard of. This is international exposure. This is a quality US company that expanded globally and is giving me a piece of each country's revenue that is generated for Microsoft. To me, this is the far superior way to get international exposure than Vixis. Just remember the difference in performance and Microsoft is representing 190 countries so it's one company, 190 countries, and 1,525% growth in its stock since 2011 versus an ETF with 8,526 companies across the globe, and that has returned a measly 15.98% since 2011. Hmm, 
I see the better way to get international exposure while making superior gains. This is not just Microsoft. It is companies like Visa who operates in 200 countries and MasterCard who operate in 210 countries. We can also look at Amazon. They operate in 13 countries. And another company of mine, S&P Global, operates in 128 countries and Global is literally in the name of the company. All of these types of high quality companies that are headquartered in the US but operate globally are how I prefer to get my international exposure. They also will see opportunities in emerging markets internationally and they go in and they grow their business further, therefore growing their revenue and profits, which in return rewards us shareholders with the increase in stock price, growing dividends, share buybacks, and more. Now, it's not just the United States. There are other strong economies where you can find companies to invest in, but just do your research. I live in the US, so that is what I know best. In the US, the environment promotes profits, and I know there are some of you that dislike companies that are just about generating profits, but that's just how it works. And I say, instead of letting these companies continuously raise prices on items you pay bills on, so Netflix, Amazon, Costco, etc., why not invest in them and make them pay you through stock price appreciation, from great financial performance or through share buybacks or through growing dividends. This is how I say to offset those increasing bills, play their game back and invest in them, make sure they're a quality company of course, and make money off of them instead of them just making money off of you. That's how I like to do it. So a way to look at if a company operates globally is through simple research, but also you can look at their earnings. Visa, for example, they are showing here that they are getting revenue from both the US and international. And you can see that the international segment of their business, the revenue is growing at 14% versus the US is 2%. So they're thriving internationally and the revenue actually is higher from their international business than the US. So this is things you can look at. They also provided this payments, volume, growth, international versus the US. So there's many things that they provide in their earnings. You can look at MasterCard. They show the operating performance uh, different parts of the world that they operate and do business with. And so you see Asia Pacific, Canada, Europe, Latin America. And you can look at these things and see what percentages they're getting their different revenue or operating performance or whatever it is. So you can make decisions on investing and get, getting that global exposure. We have talked about Microsoft. So right here on Microsoft earnings, it says, no sales to an individual customer or country other than the United States accounted for more than 10% of revenue. I love that. Microsoft is such a well diversified company and I like the fact that if you look below the revenue from the US and other countries, it's virtually almost half and half, but the half that's the other countries, there's not one country that represents more than 10% of that revenue. To me, that's a very safe way to do this and I just love that about Microsoft. So I see something like this, I love it, I invest in Microsoft, and these are this is one of the reasons why. Now I also have heard lately that Africa is going to be the next economic powerhouse of growth. So if you see areas of the world you are bullish on, you can look at companies' earnings and see if they have exposure to that market, and if they say anything about expanding growth in that part of the world that you're interested in, it's usually all in the earnings. Really, it's all about taking the time to research the companies you are invested in. That is why some just like to opt for the ETF route. It's easier, the fund does everything for you, but that usually comes at a cost, as we saw with Vixis, a big lack of growth. So bye-bye to Vixis and hello to my companies that give me better exposure to the global economies while providing me much faster growth in my investments. This is how I invest globally. Now, real quick, here's a look at my portfolio and its performance. I'm not going to do a, any kind of deep dive into this because I've done a few videos already on my portfolio, but you'll see Vixis is no longer a part of it. If you have any questions, let me know. This is the type of transparency and honesty I provide on this channel. So let me know how you get global and international exposure or if you do it all. Maybe you don't invest that way and that's fine. Also, do you agree with my stance on this and how I go about investing globally and capturing that exposure? I'd love to hear your thoughts on all this. Thank you so much for watching. Happy investing and have a great day.